Hello, and welcome to tonight's homework help for Tuesday night, November 27th, 2012. We're going to jump right in with tonight's homework, distance, rate, and time. Okay, uh, Definitions are here, distance and amount of space between two things. Uh, rate is the speed with which something moves, happens, or changes, and time is how long something happens. Uh, sometimes the duration is another word for it. Okay, it says here in each problem, determine if you are missing the distance, the rate, or the time, and then solve. So I'm, you know, uh, you can read these questions, and the first thing you want to do is figure out what are you missing. Um, the important thing here is to remember the formula we're going to use for all of these problems. Uh, I use the mnemonic device DIRT, um, D for distance, and instead of I for anything, I put I for equals, uh, which uh, coincides with the Spanish word for equals, which is igual. Um, and then uh, rate times time. So that's the formula that you'll use. I recommend you write it down on your homework. Also, when you take the quiz on Friday, you uh, do that as well. Anyways, um, Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just try this uh, problem here with the Arabian camel, uh, and I chose it for a specific reason. Uh, so first of all, it's the instructions say to look for, to try to determine uh, what value is missing. Um, and so if I read the question, it says an Arabian camel can run 20 miles per hour. How long, those two words being the key words, I'm going to underline them right now, how long would he need to maintain the speed in order to travel 80 miles? Okay, so there's 20 miles per hour and there's 80 miles. They're asking us how long. Uh, and the reason I chose this one is because of the word long. Long could mean distance or how, how the length of something, but it also could mean duration, how much time something takes. In this problem, they give us 20 miles per hour. Okay, Because it's miles per hour, I know that that's our rate. Okay, the, and it says in order to travel 80 miles, I know that's a distance. So um, I don't have a highlighter here, but I know 20 miles per hour is a rate, and I know 80 miles is a distance. So the, the long here that they're talking about then is not distance because they already give us the distance. So the long here is duration or time. So that's our T. So then if I use our equation here, D, distance equals rate times time, I'm going to set it up, um, I'm going to copy it down here again because it's up above and you guys can't see it. Distance equals rate times time, well I know the distance is 80 miles, equals the rate is 20 miles per hour times the time, T. That's the part we don't know. Okay, so now I can solve it. Uh, my variable is the t, and I want to isolate the t. Uh, it's attached to uh, the number 20 by multiplication, so I'm going to um, divide both sides by that 20, because division is the inverse of multiplication. 20 divided by 20 is 1, and 1 times t leaves me with t all alone. And that's what I wanted to do. On the other side, I have 80 divided by 20. Well, if I just look at it as 8 divided by 2, I know it goes in 4 times. So thus, it makes sense that 20 goes into 80 four times as well. So the time is 4. What is it? For what? Well, here we're talking about 20 miles per hour. So the unit is hours. Uh, so as you can see, uh, then uh, uh, we want to be sure and answer the question, how long would he need to maintain the speed in order to travel 80 miles? So we write down, uh, I, I always suggested that we uh, answer word problems um, in words, so uh, the camel would need the camel would need four hours to travel eighty miles. So a lot of times you can just copy the question almost word for word but you just rewrite it as a statement, so you have to change it a little bit. The camel would need four hours to travel 80 miles. So we expect you, I mean, if you get this answer, it's not wrong, but it, at the minimum, you should convert it to time equals four hours, but we want you to get into the habit of actually answering a word problem 
in a full and complete sentence. So the answer would be the camel would need four hours to travel 80 miles. And again, I just essentially almost copied the question part and I just filled in the answer instead of how long. I would say he needed four hours to travel 80 miles or the camel needed. Okay. Uh, all of the problems on this side are very similar, so you're going to try and figure out what the unknown is and then set up, a, in all of these cases, it's just a one-step equation and then solve for your variable. Then state your answer in a full and complete sentence. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and move over to the other side now. Okay, here we are on the other side, a silly story, and let me tell you, a very silly story it is, okay? Um, it says two third grade students were walking to school one day when they saw their teacher walking hand in hand with two gorillas, gorilla one, gorilla two. Each gorilla had five bags, okay? Um, if it helps, draw the bags. Uh, I'm not a good bag drawer, so I'm just going to draw the bags for my gorillas. Five bags, okay? Uh, each gorilla had five bags. How many bags were there in all? Well, and then if you drew it, then you can count them. Um, you could also use multiplication, okay? Um, I'm not going to do it for you. I expect you guys to do it on your own. Uh, but let's see here. How many bags were there in all? Um, then number two says, in each bag there were two bunches of bananas. How many bunches of bananas how many bunches of bananas were there in all? Show your calculation. So um, you have two gorillas and then you have five bags. So that's how we figured out the first one by mathematically. And then in each bag there were two bunches of bananas. So I would take whatever answer you get here and then realize that each bag has two bunches. So I would then multiply that by two. Uh, multiply that answer by two. That should go there. And then it says that there were three bananas in each bunch. How many bananas were there in all? Well, whatever you got for this answer, you're then going to take that answer and multiply that by three. Oops. Um, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Anyways, um, multiply that answer by 3. Uh, and then you're going to have to explain here how you figured it out. Okay. And then finally, the fourth question says each gorilla ate a bunch of bananas. Well, how many is a bunch? That means one bunch of bananas. But that's each gorilla. Uh, uh, each gorilla ate one bunch of bananas. Well, there are two gorillas, and they ate one bunch of bananas. And how many bananas are in each bunch? There's three. So you have to think that how many bananas were eaten, and then you're going to want to subtract that from the total number of bananas that you figured out were in number three. So it's a little confusing at first, but see if you can follow it. Um, what I'll do is... Since you have to show your work here, I'll give you the answer here is 54. So if you did it correctly, you should get an answer of 54. Okay, thanks for watching. Good night and good luck. Go Bears! Rawr!